The meta for Killer has changed only a handful of times over the years. I started playing when Old Ruin was still meta, and I still actively play today with our current gen kicking meta. Perks like Call of Brian Interruption dominate the Killer side and have a big impact on matches. Are these perks good for the game? What are the differences between old meta and the current one? Let's talk about it. I think if we're going to talk about what we currently are dealing with, we need to take a step back and look at what the meta was before. The very first impactful slowdown perk to come out was the original Hex Ruin that came with the Hag on release. What this did, it made skill checks regress gens if you couldn't hit greats. So if you could hit a great, the gen would continue to progress at normal speed. But if you hit a normal good skill check, it would regress a few percent every time. The nostalgia in me wants to defend this version of Ruin, but I'll admit it has both pros and cons. The pros being survivors could choose to either committing to trying to hit greats and just power through the gens, or take the time to go find the totem and get rid of it. It had counterplay. The downside to this version of Ruin and why it got changed is that it had a bigger impact on newer players than it did on experienced players. Experienced players had no problem hitting these skill checks, but new players struggled. Fast forward a couple years and now we have the same kind of Ruin that we have now, but it was stronger. It had a completely new effect where gens would progress at normal speed when you were doing them but if you let go it would start to regress at double the speed of normally kicking it this was both a stronger version of the original ruin and a more fair version because if you apply pressure throughout the map and chase survivors off of gens gens would immediately regress at a faster than normal rate giving you big value it no longer punished newer players over experienced players it kind of punished everyone the same way which is how a perk should work and it still had the counterplay of do i just commit to the gen and see if we can get it done or do we just go look for the totem and not deal with it fast forward a little bit more and we now have hex undying that came out with the blight hex undying always takes a hit for another hex totem that you have and so when you pair it with ruin it would always take two cleanses to get rid of the totem yeah i'm talking about current undying because release undying was probably a problem and i don't really want to talk about that potentially having to do all five totems to get rid of ruin was not it either Needing two cleanses to get rid of Ruin with the Ruin and Dying meta was actually great. It was a really high risk, high reward for the killer, because if the survivors couldn't really find your totems, you would have Ruin up for a really, really long time. But survivors could counterplay it by getting rid of two totems, and then the killer only has two more perks for the rest of the match. The real downside to this is different maps have way harder totem spots to find than others. Finding a totem on Swamp will take you much longer than it will on Coal Tower. Although I don't think it was the most ideal meta, I think the Ruin and Dying meta was both the fairest and best meta for killers to have. It was both very strong and very counterable, and I think that's good. All right, now we're going to time travel to this summer, earlier this year, where they did like a 40 perk overhaul to try and shake up the meta. By the way, I think this was mostly a great change. Huge shakeups like this were really, really healthy for the game, and now that we've found things that are strong or annoying, for the lack of a better word. Continuing to shake up the meta perks again would be huge for the game. What we're dealing with now is a gen kicking meta rather than a totem meta. On a high MMR killer, the perks you typically see with our existing meta are Eruption, Call of Brine, Overcharge, Scorch of Pain Resonance, Joel or Surge and even one of the newest perks with the knight, Nowhere to Hide. I think Nowhere to Hide is an incredible perk where you kick a gen and you get to see auras of people that are nearby, but I'm willing to bet the majority of the people that are running this perk are only running it because it synergizes well with their other gen kicking builds. I got a little sidetracked by Nowhere to Hide. Really the issue boils down to Call of Brian, Overcharge, and Eruption. You'll often find at least two of these perks on a build and a lot of the time, even all three of them. So what's the problem with these perks? Why make a whole video just to discuss and talk about these perks in particular? These perks give you huge value from the perks without having to earn the value. What you typically see from killers with these perks on, you'll be working on a generator and the killer comes over to you. You're supposed to normally get chased off of the generator and then go on a chase, you know, try to buy the time for your team. But instead the killer kicks the gen and then kind of just watches their gens. They're, they're more worried about the gens than they are chasing people, which I know the killer's job is to defend the gens in order to get the kills. You can't just ignore gens all game or they'll, they'll fly. Running around and kicking gens all game and not really engaging in much chase unless it's super convenient for you. That's not really playing the game. That You can't tell me that that's fun to just run around and kick gens. And it's also dreadfully boring as survivor because you are forced to do more generators 
and you can't go on chases and that's the that's the fun part of playing survivor and in my opinion and in many others it's getting chased and i also think that's the fun part about playing killer is chasing survivors trying to win the mind game you know all that good stuff to play devil's advocate i know that there are plenty of people out there that only really enjoy video games when they're winning and that's completely valid but you can win with other perks as well and if these perks were to be changed you could definitely still win games as killer when perks have such value and game changing abilities like these there needs to be a prerequisite to turn them on I mean, even Dragon's Grip has like an 80 second cooldown or some shit. I'm not looking it up. But with Call of Brian Overcharge, you can just kick gens over and over and over and over and it always applies the effect. While Call of Brian and Overcharge in their current versions are definitely a problem, no perk is a bigger problem right now on the killer side of things than Eruption. To summarize Eruption, you run around and kick gens, they'll highlight in yellow. And then when you down a survivor, whether it's an M1 or M2 or Locker Grab or anything, all of those gens that you kicked will erupt they'll lose 10% progress, and if a survivor was interacting with the gen at the time, they'll become incapacitated for 25 seconds. Personally, I don't think the 10% regression for the trade-off of having to go around and kick every gen is really a big problem. The problem lies in the incapacitation. First off, 25 seconds is way too damn long because you can't do anything. You can't tap the gen to make it stop regressing. You can't heal. You can't search a chest. You like can't even pick up or drop your item. So if you get incapacitated by eruption, the problem becomes twofold where it's already a more boring game. Of course, this is you no know, subjective, but a lot of people agree. Boring because you're spending all this time tapping gens that killers are kicking and they're not chasing you when you probably want to get chased at least once that match. You go from already not really playing the game to getting incapacitated for 25 seconds where you like legit can't play the game for 25 seconds. The second big issue I have with Eruption is the, there's only the only real counterplay to it. High level teams with really, really good communication that can call when they're going to go down. Like, hey, I'm about to go down. So your teammates will let go of the gen and you don't get the incapacitation effect, meaning this perk destroys solo queue teams unless you're in some niche situation where you have bond on and they're looping next to the gen and you can see them about to go down you really don't have a way to know if your teammate's going to go down and then bam you can't play the game for 25 seconds eruption pairs so well with call of brian and overcharge because call of brian and overcharge regress gens faster than normal the process is you kick a gen with overcharge and or call of brian you chase the survivor off of it. They'll have to come back. The gen has regressed in that time. Eventually you'll find an ideal chase to take. Eruption erupts that gen. And not only have you destroyed that generator, but if a survivor was on it, you've likely incapacitated that survivor. Now, I don't believe in talking about things I find to be issues in the game without trying to come up with at least some sort of solution. I'm a big fan of constructive criticism. I don't like to just sit here and whine. Oh, and by the way, there's a lot more that needs change than just the gen kicking meta. Like, especially survivor side, don't think I'm just targeting killers, you killer mains, if you're listening. There's a lot to change on both sides, so I just want to focus on one thing. First and most importantly, how would I change eruption? There are two ways I could see this going. We could either drastically lower the incapacitation, so we keep 10% regression on gens, but we make incapacitation like 8 seconds max. This would keep the actual slowdown portion of eruption decent, but it gets rid of the really, really boring incapacitation effect that nobody should have to sit through. The other idea, less less preferable idea for me personally, but we could also just change eruption back to its original version. Eruption used to regress gens by 6% rather than 10 and incapacitate survivors for 16 seconds instead of 25. I think 16 is still way too long and 6% regression is probably not worth going around and kicking everything but it's still better than what we have. Next up, what are some ideas to change Overcharge? I think Overcharge was totally fine beforehand. To be honest, I think they only changed Overcharge in the first place so that the perks would change, whether it was for better or worse. Currently Overcharge, when you kick a gen, it'll regress at 75%, but then eventually ramp up to 200% regression. We should just keep it at normal gen regression, so just 100% but keep the overcharge skill check that's difficult to hit and apply more regression if survivors can't hit that skill check. This would keep the perk very, very viable for like three gen setups and it would no longer be as powerful to just kick a gen and run. Lastly, for the focus of this video, Call of Brine is another perk I think needs changed. Call of Brine really has no downsides like overcharge because survivors can hit the overcharge skill check. Call of Brine instantly starts to regress the gen at 200% and you get 60 seconds of survival 
surveillance kind of where if they hit a good skill check within 60 seconds of you kicking it you'll get a notification and know that somebody's on it call of ryan has no prerequisites for it to work it has no cooldown you can just kick gens over and over and over and restart that 60 seconds and the 200 percent speed it's both a powerful regression tool and an information tool this perk needs an activation feature like pop goes the weasel does where you gotta hook somebody first or at least an injure so that you actually have to chase somebody Basically, I have two ideas for the perk. Idea number one, you have to injure a survivor to activate the perk. So you can't just run around kicking gens. You actually have to get a hit and then you can apply Call of Brine to a gen. Idea number two, you need a hook to activate Call of Brine. The perk works for the next 60 seconds, no matter what, even if a survivor touches it. So if you kick a gen with Call of Brine, survivor works on it for 10 seconds and then leaves, it'll start to continue regressing at 200% speed for the next 50 seconds. So you still get value for it, but you've earned that value by getting a hook. There's probably other great, amazing ideas out there for these perks and many others. I'm just, these are just some quick ideas I came up with that I think would at least push them in the right direction from what we have now. What makes Dead by Daylight so great, in my opinion, and in many others, is the chase. Both getting chased as survivor and chasing people as killer. And this current meta just does effectively the opposite of that. And it makes games really, really long and it makes them really dreadful. Writing perks in, in a way that encourages killers to chase survivors is the perfect solution to both the boring meta that we have and making the game more fun for both sides. Let me know if you enjoyed listening to me rant about meta and I, I don't even know how many times I said meta in this video is probably a really stupid amount. Survivors, you are not safe either. There is plenty that needs changed on your side to make the game more both fair and fun. We talk about stuff like this and everything related to Dead by Daylight on my live stream over at twitch.tv slash whispers. So if you want to talk more about this and share your thoughts there, I'd love to talk about it. I love constructive conversation about Dead by Daylight and just talking about possibilities. You know, we could change things this way or that way, as long as it's productive and constructive. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I said. I'd love to have a discussion in the YouTube comments as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.